Hello and welcome to the Gist on Strat News Global. I'm Nitin Gokhale, and with me today is German Ambassador to India, Philip Dakerman, who was uh, given us time to talk about Indo-German relations and the state of the world in general. Thanks for uh, your time and uh, uh, welcome to this program. Thank you very much for having me. It's a great honor. Thank you. So I was looking at uh, diplomatic visits between India and uh, Germany, and the last uh, one year after German Chancellor visited uh, Delhi. Uh, it's almost exactly a year now. True. Uh, how do you see, look back on this one year, if not uh, a longer period? What has been the development? So first uh, thought that comes to my mind, we had quite a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Embassy was busy, let's say. Right. Uh, G20 helped us, I have to say, but we had nine ministers and the Chancellor twice in one year. That's true. And that's for an embassy, as I say, a lot of work, yeah. but also... A some fabulous success story. We benefit from that uh, big time. Right. Um, you know, every minister who comes here, um, whether it's in Delhi or in Chennai or in Bangalore, gets away with a new image of what happens in India. And I think what we can say is that um, the German cabinet, when it comes in the second half of the year for the intergovernmental consultation, we might talk about that a little later. Sure they all come with a renewed and refreshed image of uh, India. And that's what we are here for. And I'm very happy that we succeeded in getting this new image. So what are the uh, main areas of focus or let, let me say convergence between India and Germany right now? So I think we, um, you know, there are the classical political uh, uh, items we have to discuss and we are constantly discussing them on every level. But there is also um, what we call the uh, Partnership for Green and Sustainable Development between India and Germany, a unique partnership, comes along with a lot of money, where Germany and India sit, sit together and try to figure out how to tackle climate change, how to make cities smarter, how to make um, biodiversity um, better in, in, in the world, basically. You know, without India, nothing is going to happen. It's too big a country to neglect it and therefore... I think it was a wise decision to pick India as this partner for this development partnership. And we see that, you know, it has a very concrete and very direct impact on things. Um, I'm very happy about that. Now, number three on the items on my desk is certainly business development. Mm -hmm. What we see with this uh, quite uh, fabulous growth rates India is producing, you see um, renewed interest um, by and of German business when it comes to investing in India. And in addition to that, um, we all see uh, with a certain concern the development in China over the last couple of years. And uh, although German business is very in, um, invested in China and will remain to be invested, but you see more and more um, a sort of an awareness raising that you should not put all your eggs in one basket. And therefore, in this de-risking strategy, India does play a role. Also. Mm -hmm. And my fourth and completely new big file on my desk is a migration. So Germany is in dire need of skilled labor. We have concluded with the Indian government a mobility partnership. Mm -hmm. And this mobility partnership will allow, in a very um, liberal way, um, migration from India to Germany. And uh, the Indian government is, um, is extremely helpful, mm -hmm. not only on the national, but also on the state level. And, um, you know, we have now already uh, almost 45,000 students from India and Germany. This is the biggest non-German group at German universities, mm -hmm. but also an increasing number of caretaker personnel, nurses, uh, engineering, but also, you know, craftsmen like carpenters or something. They come from India and this number will go up and we will do the utmost to, to bring it up because we need, uh, we need uh, skilled labor. And India has proven to be a very, very... Um, uh, reliable partner and the Indians have been hugely successful in, in, in sure. Germany and that's why we feel they are a good uh, crowd to have. You know, That's very interesting because uh, otherwise normally traditionally the uh, Indian uh, migration was uh, of course to the English speaking right. uh, countries like the UK and the United States yeah. and Canada mm. and of course to the Gulf uh, for various other reasons. So that's uh, very interesting to know this. But uh, coming to your third point about the German business yeah. uh, renewed interest, what are the sectors that the German businesses are looking at? So actually, I can tell you uh, exactly because um, we have about 2,200 oh. German companies here. Oh, 
<laughs> and it's not only the big ships like Siemens or BASF right. and SAP. It's also what we call Mittelstand, the small and medium sized enterprise. Right. And uh, there you have the you know the the hidden champions as we call them. Mm. You know the ones who have one highly specified, extremely sophisticated product where they're leaders on the world market. And you have uh, people like in the food industry, um, you have startups coming here. So it's across the board. Uh -huh. But I think one could say that, you know, all that has to do with renewable energies, all that has to do with sustainability, mm -hmm. India is a very interesting partner right now. And that is the smallest enterprise from Germany, the smallest startup um, can set up shop mm -hmm. here, also the biggest. So uh, it's very interesting to see how... Um, you know, how lively this exchange on the level of uh, mm -hmm. sustainability is between India and the also the, the private sector. Yeah, know? I was just going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So on the private sector, entrepreneurial uh, exchanges perhaps are much more beneficial uh, on both sides. So I always tell the German, uh, you know, public, uh, think of India as more as the government only. You know, it's like Germany. <laughs> Many good things happen outside, outside the government. Exactly. And that includes sustainability mm -hmm. you find the most striking new right. ideas the most the the most engaged and committed entrepreneurs when it comes to sustainability and they make a good money out of it of course that that's what they do but the other interesting point i found in your uh, elaboration of the relationship is the uh, way you are reaching out to the states mm. Because uh, increasingly the growth in India is not just driven by the central government, True. but by the states. True. And, and you know, we know that from home. Uh, because our system in Germany is as federally organized as the Indian system. Right. Basically, we have, we know what a state can do and what a state also will do in order to attract <laughs> investment. And they are competing against each other. And that's exactly what happens. In yes, exactly. So, uh, autom German automobiles have been mm. crazed in India. I mean, people actually look up to German automobile st uh, standards, engineering skills. Um, they have uh, also, you know, a lot of Indian companies are uh, tier one suppliers to German automobile mm. companies. And now that uh, some de-risking is happening, you s do you see more Indian companies investing in Germany? Absolutely. And that's in our interest. We want more Indian companies coming to Germany, investing in Germany. We have... On the one hand, we have all these um, the good services, the IT services like Wipro, and you had um, HCL and 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 others being in Germany, very active in Germany. But what we also see increasingly is um, Indian companies buying sm small and medium enterprises in the car supplier business, yeah. and that's a huge success. So I'm very happy to see that a country like a company like Motherson from Neudat right. is investing heavily in Germany. I think mm. they bought 15 German companies and mm. it works quite well. Yeah. yeah, so the businesses of course are there, but the recent addition or interest I see, I mean of course German defense, India uh, Germany defense relationship has been quite, uh, I would say um, deep uh, in many ways because uh, German submarines have been part of Indian yeah. Navy. But uh, do you see renewed interest in defense uh, relationship or do you see your Indo-Pacific strategy playing into uh, what uh, will be broadly the Indo-Pacific? No, no I, I fully see this renewed interest and, you know, we see a, a, a commitment or a desire, let's say, by the Indian armed forces to um, diversify their sources of uh, you know, um, uh, technologies from, and, and Germany is high on their list. Um, we also see, um, uh, you know, a certain need when you want, um, you know, to loosen your embrace of the Russian um, arms uh, delivery, you have to put something on the table, you know. I mean, what is the alternative? And, right. and therefore, I think German business is very, very interested in, in getting, uh, you know, a deeper ties in uh, when it comes to defense. Now, Defense is a bit of a um, sensitive issue in Germany. You have to see that I think our best friends to the West, the French have an easier way to deal with um, with uh, defense industry. But what I see in the last um, couple of years, and exactly basically when the Ukraine war started, um, the German government also felt the need to be more, a bit more um, or less hesitant, let's say, when right. it comes to, uh, mm. to, to, to arms sales. And we... Uh, as you know, um, we are now discussing between private uh, no, entities, uh, private entities mm -hmm. uh, uh, the possible submarine uh, deal between Germany and India. A very interesting deal, very sophisticated deal. Still up to the Indian side to decide. I think we have not seen uh, the final result, but we are confident that we have a good offer on the table. And, and that will be, I think, a, a huge um, uh, 
sign, you know, not only the submarines would be great for the Indian Navy, but it's also a sign of commitment from the Germans. True. In fact, your defense minister's visit will create quite a buzz yeah. when he went to Moscow or Oxy, went to Western exactly. Naval Command. <laughs> that, that That's what happened. But uh, yes, I think uh, because of the uh, old uh, tradition or old ties in submarine, uh, that is a great possibility going forward. But do you see uh, the Indo-Pacific strategy that Germany has adopted uh, then uh, making you more interested in this region and beyond? Clearly, clearly, clearly. Look, Germany is a completely export-oriented economy. We are a very strong economy and we live from export and imports. You know, it's a globally, maybe it's the most globally um, set up economy um, in the world. And therefore, free navigating, free shipping is for us essential. And what we see in the region is that, you know, there are certain threats that one, not can, one cannot deny. And, and therefore, I think um, together with India, together with our partners, we should really, um, you know, show our concern and show our dedication to, to keep these ship routings open. Right. So um, what you will see, and this is for me very, um, you know, I'm, I'm very happy about that in, Jul in August this year. We'll have a huge um, Air Force exercise together with the Indian Air Force. Um, and it's not only Germany, it's with our French and Spanish partners. And I think even the UK has joined. Right. So this will be in the south in Coimbatore with a, a group of German uh, jet fighters coming from, from Germany. And we will also send a, a frigate and, a, um, and a, um, 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 uh, another ship uh, to, to Goa, I think, in the, in the second half. of So two big ships will come. Right. Um, and be part of a Indo-Pacific uh, or, 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 yeah, you know? and, and that is um, I think uh, not to be underestimated because it shows that you know although it's far away from home uh, the German Navy the German Air Force is very much looking what happens here and is very much joining hands with the Indian side you know? right so in that context how do you see the quad panning out as far as the global uh, you know, sort of pushback against China's belligerence is concerned. The the what? The quad. The, the quad. quad, the quad. Yeah, I think you know, I, I we we welcome all international formats. I think it's a very interesting format with many friends of all friends of ours are in the quad. Exactly. And, and it's it's the countries that are the most um, concerned by the Indo-Pacific. So therefore, I you know we uh, we think this is a very very um, well received format internationally. What about uh, the outcomes in G20? Mm. Uh, you said it was a great experience uh, last mm. year, I'm it sure, was. for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, the uh, follow-up to uh, the outcomes in mm. G20, uh, are you looking at anything particular with India or with the region, uh, anything that comes to mind? I think that uh, India, uh, basically, the uh, G20 is, of course, a format that is is, is not an easy format. Sure. We have seen that during the Indian right. presidency. You have to find to to bridge a big gap between uh, absolutely you know, poles, um, and I'm not talking about Russia alone. You know, it's 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 a it's a very varied bunch of people around the table. Sure. It's not like the G7 or the EU or something mm -hmm. where you know overlap is big. Right. Know, South Africa and 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 the Netherlands also with or or, or or Germany and the Netherlands only I guess, but the Germany and 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 China that very diff on different levels in a way, no? but. The, I think the Indian side, uh, you know, came up with a remarkable result, remarkable under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, let me, it's not with pathos that I say, but I think the G20 survived because mm -hmm. of India. If India hadn't succeeded in getting this uh, declaration out, I think that we didn't, we wouldn't see the G20 very much alive nowadays. Oh, so yes. that, that goes soon to the Indian government. Um, they really did the, you know they did the extra mile and they went the extra mile and 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 finally got it and and therefore i think this is the um, the, the spirit of india will keep the g20 alive for a bit well, that that's uh, good to know mm. uh, but uh, talking about russia mm. I and mean, there are divergences uh, in the uh, outlook that germany has about russia mm. and what india is doing with russia or the the way it is dealing with russia does that affect bilateral relations so I think you know we we Germany and India are strategic partners, tra tra strategic partners, and very developed democracies in in a way. And uh, between democracies and strategic partners, there are always you know divergent, as different views that is normal. And uh, you know the Ukraine war, the war of aggression in Ukraine, is just in front of our door, uh, and um, it is far away from here. Um, uh, India's relation with Russia goes way back; it is a long-standing old relation. Um, 
that India doesn't react the same way than the European countries is understandable to a certain degree. And, you know, we keep talking to the Indian side about this. I'm, I'm aware and I'm very sure that India is also concerned about the region uh, when it comes to, you know, the Ukrainian-Russian border, about the war in Ukraine. I mean, the Prime Minister himself made it very clear that, you know, he doesn't think that this is an era of war. So um, I, I would say um, we agree in 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 many we, on many things. We agree on on the fact that this war is very unfortunate and it should stop as quickly as possible. Um, the way how to get there is maybe we have differences, but you know Germany is of course very clearly party to this. You know we are very very much supporting Ukraine, very obviously. India is more neutral. Maybe India can at some stage play a very useful role. And I'm very heartened to see that the Prime Minister is regularly talking to both sides. Well, so, yeah, he just did good. last week. Yeah, yeah exactly. So in that context, Germany is also actually in the Russia-Ukraine context. Uh, Russia has also upped its defense budget considerably. Um, how is that panning out as far as the people in Germany are concerned? Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I, I, uh, I started by saying that the Ukraine war has changed the whole mm. political setup in, in yes. Germany, and mm. we call it Zeitenwende, a uh, change of times, as it were, mm -hmm. um, where we rethought the whole thing, defense, our army, how, what to spend, how to spend it. And um, it, um, it's clear that, uh, you know, Russia has become a, a real threat to Europe, um, and um, we see, you know, as partners in NATO, we see with greatest concern what happens in the region. We have no trust in Russia anymore in this case. So and that what means, what does it mean? It means that we have to uh, strengthen our armed forces. And that's what's happening big time, if what's happening big time right now. And, and that yeah. is not only limited to Germany, it's all over, it's all over the, Europe as the, well, the yeah. European continent. Yeah, exactly. So, in that context, NATO has to be strengthened also. I mean, going by... There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And, you know, this is the strange times we're living in. You remember one uh, big European leader a couple of years ago said NATO was brain dead. Now, look at what NATO is very much alive and that's kicking. True. Uh, you can never write off uh, institutions like that. Yeah, so that's so, happening. Also, the uh, Israel uh, act in, or Israel's um, uh, you know, kind of uh, dealing with Gaza mm. crisis... Uh, how is that impacting uh, European Union or NATO? So I think it's it's a big issue uh, in 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 Europe and in Germany in particular. You know about our you know historic yes. responsibility right. when it comes to Israel. Our you know solidarity with Israel is very strong, and we um, the right to exist of Israel is, is is in our DNA, so to speak. It's very very important to us. Still, what we see right now makes us very uncomfortable. I think we can say that. And when you listen to what the German government says to Israel and also in the, in the public is, you know, we should think on how to get out of this terrible war in Gaza. That, and a ceasefire, you have seen what the United Nations Security Council just, just adopted, is um, an urgent matter. That ha And we have to do everything to avoid a new offensive in uh, Rafah, Rafa. uh, in towards the border. So, um, you know, my, my, my government is very concerned about the situation in Gaza on the ground. And, and that, notwithstanding our huge, uh, you know, sympathy with Israel and what happened on 7th of October is sure. a disaster. Uh, but of course. the question is how to tackle mm -hmm. it. And, and now I think we see the world joining hands, basically. Even the Americans, you know, are very strongly um, advising for for a ceasefire and I hope that the negotiations in Qatar will lead to something and I hope that the Israeli government will reconsider its uh, you know, decisive enough to go for an attack in Rafa. Let me come to a couple of personal uh, questions. You've been a, a deputy, uh, what should I say, representative for Afghan, Pakistan yeah, yeah. Uh, region. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, so, so how do you see that region right now? Because it impacts India and that's why I'm asking. Yeah, it's, it, it has a big impact here. Yeah. <laughs> In India, of course. Um, now, let let me say that you know there is a, a generation of German diplomats who have been somehow involved in Afg in the Afghanistan um, you know mission, and we we are many of us. And I basically uh, ten years of my career, uh, I was directly or indirectly linked to this Afghanistan mission. So it is. I I be very honest with you. It's with a painful heart that I look how the situation is uh, is, is is right now. It was. In, in at hindsight, it was, you know, mistakes were made, obviously, and and the mission was, that started with the best of all intentions turned out to be, 
not successful. Um, and many aspects of it were a failure. Um, uh, I lived in Kunduz in the north of Afghanistan for a while. Um, and I, you know, this is not a typical diplomatic sure. um, posting, I would say. It's <laughs> not like receptions with champagne. So, but I, I, had, I, I met all the mullahs every week <laughs> and drank tea with them. But it was a great experience. I must great experience. I have the greatest uh, memories of this wonderful part of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And also, also, you know, my interaction with the people was, was the, the interactions were very rewarding in many ways. So what, what do the diplomats say? Um, if you fail, uh, you should try to find a better way, uh, not of failing, don't fail better, but uh, <laughs> uh, make it better and, to, and never waste a crisis. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I refuse to give up hope on Afghanistan. Ah. Uh, it's, it's very important to keep in, uh, in the loop and talk to the Taliban, although um, we really disagree on almost everything. everything. Yeah? Uh, but we need to uh, to engage them. Uh, and was it only because of the terrible situation of women and girls in Afghanistan? So I think it's only through dialogue that you can improve their uh, destiny. So um, I will maybe not in my career, I will not see a, a renewed Afghanistan, but I'm, I am I refuse to give up hope when it comes no, to but that, That's a very uh, good uh, view to take because... India is also trying to sort yeah. of, uh, you know, remain engaged, if Very, nothing else. And, and we have seen, you know, Indian embassies mm. active in a way, yeah. and um, that makes complete sense to me. You know, I mean, it's, Afghanistan is basically a neighboring country sure. in a way. Absolutely. So basically, and should, very old ties yeah. with uh, India. So that very so. good. So I remember when I, <laughs> when I, um, when I bought mangoes in um, uh, in, in, in the streets of Kunduz. I asked, where do they come from? Because, you know, there are basically no mangoes in Afghanistan. Yeah, exactly. They say, as Hindustan. They ah, come from Hindustan. India. <laughs> and it's not true because they all came from Pakistan. But they say, <laughs> but they are Hindustan. Hindustan. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they have a lot of affinity. to Absolutely. Yeah, that, that. And they all speak a little Hindi because they watch Bollywood movies. From oh, Africa. yes, of course. So you also spent time in India in the earlier yeah. years, in I think about uh, 12, 13 years ago? 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Uh, what's the change that you see? Ah, it's enormous. It's a... Uh, you know, when you come after 12, 15 years, you must see the country has changed profoundly. And um, uh, yeah, in, in many ways, you know, um, there is a huge push when it comes to infrastructure, digitization, unbelievably, you know, the, the progress that has been made. Um, so there is a lot of, um, of things that um, uh, I'm, I'm full of admiration and respect for. I think it's, it's great. I mean, Developments are so and so, you know, with all this uh, uh, economic buzz and booster. It's also sometimes polarization is there. There is also um, sometimes, um, you know, antagonism is there. But I, w I think, generally speaking, you know, what a what a journey. I mean, what India has uh, under. It's a young country, yeah. a large and a young country. It's not that young, actually, but the <laughs> the. It's no, old young country. in terms of demography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very young <laughs> in democracy. That, that's yeah. true. Demography. Demo but even what? even that has changed, you know, because when you see the birth rate of India, it's very good right now. It is below one two point one. That's so. Right. There, when you go to, I, <laughs> I went to Chennai. I spoke to the government and I said, you know, we talked about migration and they say, oh, oh, oh migration. We have a birth rate of one point six. That's not good enough. You know, yeah. everybody should uh, be here and not go away. Yeah. This is like Germany. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah, it's, it's a country of contradictions, yeah. full of paradoxes. Uh, that, but that's that, the charm. Also. That's the charm of this country. So thank you for this uh, wonderful conversation. Thank you for your time. Thanks for uh, having me in your, in your program. It was a pleasure. Thank you.